I chose not to use any colors, but to only use grays on this pinstriping piece so that I could teach you guys what they taught me in college about how color works. Kind of seems odd, but stay tuned. This is the first in a series that I'm doing on color and pinstriping. For some time now, I've wanted to do a series of videos that will be kind of a deep dive into color theory and pinstriping. If you followed this channel for a while, or if you followed me on social media, you probably know I used to teach art. And one of my favorite things to teach, one of my favorite things to use whenever it comes to art, is color. I absolutely love like the science behind color, how it works, how it works with our brains and stuff. And I've thought for a while it'd be cool to do a series of videos um, doing some different pinstripe pieces. This is actually something I need to finish up for my booth, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do this. Um, but use these pieces to kind of work through some different color theory problems, talk to you guys about mixing colors and stuff, and really give you a little bit deeper dive into color theory with pinstriping than I've seen in any videos before. I guess you could say these videos are for the paint nerds, so if you don't feel like you're a paint nerd, it's probably not a video for you. Um, this will be the first video, and I think the basis, the thing to start off with, rather than really talking about color, is to start off with value. Uh, value is light to dark, right? One end of it being black, one end of it being white, and gray being right in the middle. So we want to have a real conversation in these videos about color. And in order to do so, we've got to kind of have a common vocabulary. Um, when we talk about color, there's certain characteristics that we can describe about a color. We can say what color it is, right? What the name of it is, that's hue. We'll get into that later. We can talk about how dark or how light the color is, which is what we're talking about today, value. We can talk about intensity, right? How bright that color is. Um, I've also heard it called chroma. That's what I was taught whenever I was in art school. Um, you know, it's like how bright to dull the color can be. We can also talk about a color's temperature, right? If it's a warm color or a cool color. We'll get into all of those in this series. And I kind of want to break this series down into, you know, one video on at least each one of those, if not a couple of videos on some of them, because some of them get pretty deep. But personally, I feel like the best place for us to start is where we're starting here, and that being value. When you go to art school, um, well, backtrack a little bit, I guess. I kind of wanted these videos to be for the people who haven't gone to art school or who wish that they could and maybe don't have access to it or something. Uh, one of the first things that they teach you when you start talking about color is going to be value. And one of the first projects that you do is a value scale. So we're taking paint and we're mixing the paint. That's what we're doing in this. Um, to blend it from the highest value being white and the lowest value being black. I think this is one of the best places to start because we can easily understand how I can take any color, say blue or uh, violet or something else, and I can add white to it to make it lighter. I can add black to it to make it darker. And I actually eventually will show you guys how to make them darker without using black. This all kind of gives us more control. This is a good opportunity, too, to talk about what color is. When we see a color on something, what is it that's going on? If we break it down to the scientific part of it, it all has to do with wavelengths. Um, we know that light comes from the sun or maybe an artificial source like a light bulb. And it comes in waves. There's light waves. There's different kinds. You've probably heard of stuff like ultraviolet light waves. Um, these light waves, whenever they hit a surface, they bounce off of that surface. And when we're looking at them, we're seeing what light waves are bouncing off of that surface. So if I'm looking at something white, like maybe a white car out in the sunshine... All of those light waves that are bouncing back at me are really bright. It kind of hurts my eyes a little bit, but this is kind of one of the best ways I can think of to kind of get into what this is, because um, we've kind of all had that experience, right? The other thing that we know, too, is if I put my hand on that white car, 
It's not as hot as it would be if it was a black car. The reason for that is white reflects all of the light rays that are coming from the sun. You know, all the light waves and stuff. Black actually absorbs a lot of those. So with black absorbing those light rays, it makes that surface hotter. When we look at the color black, it looks kind of like it does whenever there's no lights on at all, right? We don't see any light waves bouncing around in a room with no light. Everything looks black. If I look at a black surface, there's not light rays bouncing back from that black surface to my eyes. This is important when we start talking about colors like red and blue and yellow because they all have their own value. Yellow, whenever it's the brightest, is kind of close to white and the fact that there are a lot of light waves bouncing back at us. Red is kind of somewhere in the middle. It's kind of like the gray that I've mixed here on this. Half of the light waves, I guess you could say, are bouncing back at us. And then colors like blue or what some people call purple, other people call violet, those are farther down on how many light waves are bouncing back at us. We could say they are farther down on the value scale, which is what we're creating here. It's my intention, I guess, if you're watching this video and following along with me, that you create a value scale of your own. Go ahead and get some white and some black and see if you can make a smooth transition from one end to the other in between. This gives us an opportunity, one, to see how much black I need to add to white, you know, to darken it, or how much white I need to add into black. It's my experience that I have to add a lot more white into a color to lighten it up than I do have to add black into a color to darken it. Black seems to be really, really powerful. Likewise, we'll find that there's some colors out there that are also extremely powerful when it comes to mixing into others that you don't have to mix as much into. Yellow is kind of a weak color when it comes to mixing. You gotta add a lot of yellow to something to get it to become more yellow looking. Going back to the vocabulary part of this um, and following along in this series here, it's kind of going to be important for us to understand that word value because it's something that we're going to use to describe colors. I might describe a certain green as being a higher value green than another green, um, which would be a darker value green. As pinstripers, this applies to us a lot of times if I've got to do a color match on a car or something. Um, I can take a little bit of paint of what the color is that I think it's going to be and put it next to that color that I'm trying to match and I might notice that it's a higher value or a lower value. And then I know what it is that I need to do to adjust it. Perhaps I need to add black to it to lower the value or maybe I need to add a lower value color to it to, to lower the value of it in order to get that color to match right. I actually have a friend of mine that he does a lot of long lines on cars and a lot of uh, body shop repair work. And him and I have kind of gotten into a game whenever we've got a match of color. We'll send each other pictures of how quick we're able to do it or how many tries we're able to get that color matched in. And it's kind of cool whenever you can get a color match perfectly in like two or three tries or if you get it spot on the first time. And then we get to hang that over each other's head a little bit. So it's kind of fun. So as pinstripers, this knowledge becomes important to us for a couple of reasons. Um, now we got light to dark, right? This is on a black background. The black tends to blend in. White on black looks like it's coming closer to us. So whenever we stripe, lines that are lighter are going to appear to be in front of lines that are darker. Um, and it'll just kind of stagger. So the piece that I'm about to start here, I'm going to start with some sort of darker color and build my way up. That way, there's depth to what it is that I'm doing. And I'll show you guys a couple of other things that come in. This will be important whenever we're working with colors um, because some colors might become closer to us because they're brighter and others might be duller. We're going to get into stuff like that. We're starting off with value, light to dark. Um, later on, we're going to get into some different color schemes. Eventually, we'll end up talking about bright to dull. Um, what else?
else can I think of? Warm to cool, things like that. We'll go through a whole bunch of different stuff in this series. It's gonna take a while. They'll come out slow. Hope you guys hang with me on that. But let's go ahead and get started on this. For me, I like pinstriping designs that have a little bit of depth to them. When I say depth, what I mean is some parts of the design look like it's farther in the back and other ones are in the front. It's not all totally flat and on one level. It kind of gives our eye a little bit more to look at. The way I'm accomplishing that in this piece is to start with a darker gray. After that darker gray, I'm coming in with a little bit lighter gray on top of it. That lighter gray looks like it's a little closer to us because it's a higher value. I guess you could say it's a rule that dark colors recede and light colors come to us. So, of course, my battery died while I was filming for y'all, but I got my striping done. And kind of the whole point of what I've been showing y'all, and I'll do a little zoom in here. You can see how the darkest lines, the ones I started with here, look like they're in the back. Right? This light line here is in front. If I had this dark line crossing over that, it would actually end up looking like that lighter line is cut. And that's not something that I like. Depth-wise, I like it to where the light ones look like they're floating in front of the darker ones. My lightest color on here is actually this color. This one's a little bit darker, and then we go back to the darkest. So it kind of gives us three stages of depth there. And you can see I got my toothbrush out here. I'm going to try and do something without messing up the rest of this that I messed around with on I messed around with on a couple of these in the past and I'm going to try a little something different with it here. Let me show you guys. So I've just got a leftover postcard from a different show that I did that I'm using to block off parts of the design here that I don't want to have any of the splatter on. I've set it on top of some little pieces of cork so it doesn't touch the wet paint underneath it because I'm working wet on wet. This is all very fresh. The idea is for the splatter parts to be on the outside of that little rectangle. It's just something to break up that background a little bit and cause a little bit more interest. Something for people to look at a little longer. kind of feel like that's our job as artists is to get people to look at things longer. A little tapping and a little splattering. And there we go. These are actually pretty neat little pieces that I do. I like them. It's a keychain holder. Uh, it's a holes to drill some holes through and then end up screwing in spark plugs uh, into those holes. I get leftover spark plugs from friends of mine that have automotive shops. Whenever they do a tune-up, they save the spark plugs for me. So I'm kind of recycling here at the same time. It becomes a functional piece of automotive art. Kind of neat. The original idea was to have these for people who have shops and stuff and might have, you know, a whole bunch of different customer keys that they need to hang up or whatnot. Or, or to go inside of your man cave or garage, you know, place that you store your own cars. Or if your wife lets you, maybe you could go ahead and use them in the uh, house there <laughs> with the regular car keys and house keys. And just putting some little rubber bumpers on the back here to help protect the wall whenever it hangs on it. And I go ahead and put hanging hardware on them. So. And that wraps those up and then they're ready for the wall and to put your keys on. Kind of cool. I like them. I like making them. They're a lot of fun. So these are a lot of fun to make and I hope you guys like the video. As I get opportunities to work on some personal pinstriping projects, I'm going to start focusing those on specific color problems. Um, so that I can use those as an opportunity to make videos for y'all explaining the different parts of color theory. Uh, help us build up a little bit of a vocabulary. Same kind of things they teach you in art school. And hopefully that helps. I know not everyone wants to go to art school. Not everybody can go to art school. Not everybody cares. <laughs> but I know a lot of people that aren't interested in that while at the same time, are interested in what it is that's taught there or wish that they had the opportunity to learn those things. So I think it's a really cool opportunity for me. Share that with y'all. Stay tuned to this series of stuff. I'll make it its own little playlist and we'll just kind of work our way through all the different steps of color theory and how color works. And hopefully that'll help you guys as you mix colors or work with colors and stuff to come up with some better pieces. So have a good day. Click on the like button, right? Click on one of the 
two videos that pops up. See y'all later. Paint some. If you've stuck around, go to my website. Put the link right here, jackflemingartistry.com. I've got art prints. I've got clothing. This isn't one of mine. Uh, shirts and stuff like that. Sometimes I put up the pinstriping pieces that I make or original paintings and stuff. Those are all for sale there. Drink glasses, you know, cups. All sorts of different stuff. Go check that out. That helps support me and my family. And the more money that that makes gives me more time to make stuff so that I can make videos for y'all. Uh, have a good day. Bye.